Welcome to the Ecamm demo. It is time, y'all, for a little bit of bass and a little bit of drums to feel your soul. All right, so we're going to get in today. We're going to talk about some things. Ecamm, uh, I see Mr. Moderator is here, so he can let you know what to do. Of course, Parker's always first in the building. Today, somehow, Arby, Arby beat you. Um, I like to I like to say now that Parker lives here because <laughs> whenever you open the door, Parker is always there. So, so good to see you, brother. Uh, we're going to get this thing started, um, and yeah, uh, I need to know if you can use placeholder shots with custom video. No, it's called a placeholder camera, so no. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's literally called a placeholder camera. However, maybe you worded your question weirdly, so reword it if you have a different thing than what I'm thinking, but if I read it as you wrote it, placeholder camera not placeholder video. You don't need placeholder videos because you put them in place and then they just be there. So I don't know, Trevor, you worded in case I, I twisted the, I twisted it up. Um, I like Dave cause we got the same haircut. Uh, anyway, let's get into this joint real quick. Let's get, let's get into this. What are you cleaning the kitchen? Oh, come on now. <laughs> All right, gang. There you go. There you go. Let's uh, remember to throw those cues in those questions so we can get it started. Man, that joint never gets old. For those of you new people to Ecamm, you don't really know the sauce yet. That tune right there, that little ditty that you heard in the beginning, that was crafted by DJ Right On B, a.k.a. DJ Rob. Kind of one of the, you know, most cleverest names, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, Parker say I got a roommate. Well, keep your room clean, Parker, damn it. Clean your room. <laughs> All right. Let's get it twisted. Let's get it twisted. I'm going to go into popping that. That brings us into live demo mode. For those of you playing the home game, if you want to go into live demo mode ever to show somebody like how to use your thing or whatever, if you look in here under, I don't even know where it is because I just use a shortcut. Oh, it's an options. Command shift D. Command shift D brings you into live demo mode. I, I, you know what, folks, I barely use this menu up here. I do everything with my fingies. Uh, Paul will give you the link to the shortcut keys. The sooner you learn the shortcut keys, the better, not the better you'll be at Ecamm because that's, I mean, it's just how good your memory is. However, it will make things easier, right? Because you can just hit switches on the next block real quickly with your fingers instead of like up to the menu, comb through, especially when your vision starts to get a little bit like, you know, huh? When you start tilting your neck back like Paul Duncan to see, if you know the shortcut keys, you just hit them. But on the menu, you got to go in there. 
wait, 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 wait. I wait. I, I gotta give me a second. Give me a second. And then you just look like Paul Duncan. I just need a cat to walk across my desk. And we got it. I love you, Paul. <laughs> All right, yo, let's dive in. Uh, do you do Switzerland delivery? Oh, yes, yes. You know what's funny? Uh, I was just watching Cat and Tom. If, fam, if you guys did not see the magic that is Cat and Tom with uh, random impromptu, let me show you real quick how to do this. So Are you, you can working say, on hey, your Kat, home studio zip, 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 and zip. you want to see Kat, behind? stop talking to me. There you go. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to hit the screen share real quick. This icon right here is just so you can see how I do it in the fly. You can see this icon here looks like a little bitty iMac. That's the screen share iMac. If you throw it up in the corner like such and then embiggen it to your liking. Come to find out today, uh, this week, Johnny taught me that embiggen is an actual word, not something I made up. Okay, that works. <laughs> um, and then I would just select Google Chrome. And then so there's Cat. But... She did a stream today. I don't know why I jumped to that. It should have been back here. Um, there was Kat and Tom did a, an amazing Correct. video today because she happened to be in the desert. So she went to the Buck Studios International and they put on a master class and asking audio questions about mics and all of that. So I highly suggest you run that back because it will answer round by heap of your questions, right? Um, they did a fantastic job. It was really good. It was very, it's always nice to see when the Ecamm fam, you know, meet in real life and conversate and pulls everything together because that's the thing that's dope about our community is we tend to coordinate and collaborate, and I absolutely love that. So anyway, let's get it twisted. This over here, where we're gonna start, is we're gonna start in the scenes menu, right? The way I like to remind folks what it be is that scene, oh, let's start with profiles, right? At the top here, you got profiles, there is no shortcut key, but you see I got a profile for the affiliate stream, from my Amazon live streams, from Ecamm demo, from a Final Cut Global Summit training when I'm training over there, from my IG lives, from my standard uh, LGL stream. This was for LinkedIn, it says LI. And then I got a special setup for the flow. And then I got one called They Don't Read. That's when I make tutorials because people ask questions that I've discussed about 50 times, but for some reason, people don't read. So I just use that to make tutorials. It kind of like moves everything out the way, oversimplifies the interface like the whole nine yard, right? I can't actually change uh, profiles while you're live, but when you're not live, think of your profiles as the overall house, right? Inside that house, you're going to have some scenes. These scenes are like rooms, right? You got your intro, which is like the front door, and then you got your first scene, second scene, all the way down, you know, skip the bathroom, no one wants to see that. But think of them as rooms. And then think of overlays, things that are in your scenes, think of them as furnishings in said room. So if I were to delete all the furnishings in this room, real quick, let's do that. Now, the only furnishing I have is a camera A. So if I delete camera A, ooh, there's no furniture in this room. Matter of fact, Think of the background, you'll see right here, I have show and background. Show and background is my area rug, okay? So now look, I got no rug, I just got a plain Jane Holyfield scene. Matter of fact, if I were to like go and create a brand new scene, boom, there it is. I got a whole new empty room with nothing in it, right? So we're gonna call this overhead because I've been building my overhead scene for you guys. Okay, so now, what I'm gonna need first is I'm gonna need a camera. There's a multiple different situations to put in the camera. You can come up here to the tippity top, up here and just hit the camera, screen share movie, just so we're keeping it twisted. Why is there 28 people watching and only 15 people don't press that button? That's just rude, that's just rude. <laughs> okay, so if I press the camera, boom, the camera comes on. I almost never do this. I can't stand this camera, and it's only because you'll see it in a minute. There's no versatility. There is absolute zero versatility. So it's there for a reason. That's the way things used to be. But back in version three, we added <laughs> movable cameras, right? Cameras as overlays. So let's remove this furniture from the room. Now, we're gonna come down here to the furniture store. Think of overlays as your furniture store. Come down here to the furniture store, S-T-O, and I need me a camera. I press that button, I get a camera, 
Now, what do I, now why is it cooler? Because look, I can pit it wherever I want to put it, right? You know when your moms or your wifey be making you rearrange the furniture, right? I can get a classic four by three look, old school, you know, like TVs when Gretchen grew up. I can stick it on a square, you know, these seven L7s, right? I can go hit it on a circle, boom, 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 right? And then it's called too much caffeine, Kevin. I can see out the corner of my eye. There's a squircle, my favorite, right? Anybody watch uh, Fifth Element? My favorite. And then you could also do tall if you're trying to like replicate that iPhone vibe, right? So for this particular scene, since we're going to set up my uh, my camera is my standard scene, I like to put it on, sorry, 16 by 9 wide, all right? So I come over here like this. Now, when you start your camera up straight, you're going to come out looking straight, hardcore like this. No beauty involved, right? All you got to do, take your corner radius, move it to how you like it. Let me embiggen this so you can see. I like mine round about 18. And then take my border width. I like mine round about 8 to 10. It's up to you. It's your world, your squirrel. You get a nut, do whatever you want. Click on this little color cheek lay right here, and then you get crowns. I don't use crowns because those aren't my brand colors. I use my brand colors. Super Simon said to the pie man when he went to the fair, look down here in the bottom. I have made a cheek lay for all the brand colors. Colors, 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 colors. Right? So if you also look over here on this particular panel, you can see this is what you see when you first get there. It's like your web colors, right? You got crayons. These are all the colors that are in the crayons. Believe it or not, they all have names. You can also find those names by hovering over them, right? But you can see this is my personal brand, my LGO brand. I have made my palette here. This is my personal palette. This is what I use for my show. But I got a little ECAN one, the basics, right? When you see our general stuff, this is what you see, the basics. But because we actually do an actual brand, not a logo my nephew made, we have an extended color palette. These are all the colors that are legal to use with the ECAM brand as according to our team. Okay, so what I pick is this here color is my border. It can be any which one of these here colors I want depending on what I'm building today, but I'm gonna stick with tan. Why? Because it marinates perfectly with my area rug. Now, under normal circumstances, I would go into, Tatiana, you are so cute. I'm about to send her uh, a pizza. I'm gonna send you free pizza delivery. <laughs> she said I'm only mid forties. That's why I love Tati. She's such a nice person. The rest of y'all can kiss, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so let me go get an area rug. Normally, I would just grab a folder and then drag it in. But I did something stupid this week. I was cleaning out my computer and I erased the folder that has the ECAM assets in it like a dummy. But don't worry, Jen A. I'm just copying it back from my raid right now so I can put it back. I don't know why. I clean I, I cleaned everything. Like I emptied all of my stuff and I erased my entire Paul, yeah, anyway, so <laughs> I luckily I already have it here, so I'll just add my area rug, which is a background, boom, there you go, right? I got variations of area rug, you know what I'm saying, right? You could kind of stick back there, whatever you want. This one's not going to work. Oh, it did work. Okay, the movie already copied back. So this is a subsequent movie film. If you want to have a moving background, you can throw a video back there, uh, looking at you, uh, Paul and, and Katie and uh, who else said that? Some of y'all, somebody, oh, Louise said, I feel attacked. Yeah, um, I'm 10 years older than Tati. Uh, don't, oh yeah, happy birthday, Tots. Happy birthday to you. Feliz Navidad. Mm -mm. Wait, that's Christmas. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> anyway, happy birthday, Tati. Everybody in the comments real quick, drop a happy birthday for the lovely Tots. She is always down. She's always helping out the community, hangs out, makes it a lot of fun. So, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. So, let's uh, – anyway, I, I barely – only when I do demos do I put video back there. I don't know why people think they need it. 
trust in your gangsterness. You don't need that. And your stream will work better the less things you make it do. Now, I have a Mac Studio. I could put an 8K video back there, and I still don't do that, right? I'm just telling you, if your machine is weak sauce, don't try to get cute with the video background. If your machine is a little suspect, stick to a plain Jane, one of these. It will make your life much better because your machine is not working. It's Okole off trying to play that video. If you are going to play a video, try to find a loop that is really only like five to 10 seconds and loop so clean that nobody notices and then put it back there because those aren't very hard. That particular file is kind of big. So yeah, and again, in the Mac studio, you know, with 64 gigs of RAM, it could do that. If you got a, a Mac mini eight gig, you probably don't want to play like that. All right. It's just like knowing that you can't roll up with your Honda Fit and get six sheets of plywood. But me and my Tacoma all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? All right. There you go. Just want to throw that out there. So, you know. Ooh, I love cornbread cupcakes. <laughs> Man, the first person that it, that comes up with like sending food like a text Fam, it's on. Because I'm going to text me and Luis, uh, Luis and I, I'll speak English. I will text us a ham and manchego from the sandwich shop next to the Ecamm office. <laughs> anyway, so let me throw this up here. Like, So this is just going to be my standard host camera. Normally what I do is I am big it to the borders, right? We have some sort of built-in, like these are the center lines to kind of help you, like, you know, get your life together, right? So those are built in. They kind of help you. Uh, when you're building scenes and doing things of that nature, they kind of help you because they keep things sort of intact, right? Let me look for something in my downloads folder real quick. I'm pretty sure I saved it in here. If not, I'd be really stupid if I moved it to the folder that I deleted. That would be really angry. Um, the other thing that you should do is think about having some sort of... Uh, General guidelines for where you place things in your show. So once you build your show out the way you like it, I would highly suggest you go in and build yourself like a little template so that you can recreate those inside of your Adobe Express, your Canva, your Photoshop, your whatever. Oh, by the way, if you just so happen to miss the Adobe Express funsies, uh, it's all available and you have to, uh, Paul will get you a link. You got to go in there and do some stuff, but it'll basically give you access to all of that. And then, yeah, you'll see. It's quite an amazing uh, setup. Pretty cool. All right, there you go. My copy just finished. And give me one second here. I just need to pull this out. I'm going to send this over here to myself. Ooh, save that. Um, I got this from a day that I spent on office hours with Alec Lindsay and Keely sent me this. It's something that a lot of people in their group use. And I absolutely love this thing. I think this is something that everybody should have on deck and there it goes. It just copied over. Let me drag it in real quick. So it's just a PNG file. This is just a plain Jane PNG file. I'm going to drop it on top of my camera so you can see. Like, my joint is set, right? But, like, I kind of do this by heart. Like, because I've been doing video damn near since Jesus walked to Nazareth. So, yeah, my stuff is like this on purpose. For most of you guys that are doing this right here, it's, it's not a thing. Like, if you want people to fall in love with you, see you eye to eye. This is about right. So screen shoot this, uh, go look for a Fenwick framer, go to an office hours meeting and ask them for the Fenwick framer. They'll send you the file. I sent an email to uh, Mr. Fenwick to see if I can freely distribute this to you. Ecamm people, he ain't answered me back yet, but this is about what you're looking for, right? This is kind of your thing. So take a screenshot of that and build accordingly. All right, there you go. So we got my master joint set up. Let's go ahead and work on our next joint. So I got my overhead camera thing. And then you're saying like in Ecamm, we have a brand new camera switcher right up here in the tippity top, right? You click on camera switcher. It looks like a English flag, boom. Then you can see I have in all my extra cameras and super funny, this one, <laughs> That, that one is having issues today, but I know why. 
That's because I was messing with it yesterday because I'm about to pack it for my trip. Anyway, so there's my overhead camera. And as you can see, it's uh, slightly upside down. So all I need to do, in the very inside of the camera picker, there is a little Harry Potter wand, right? You hit this, say Aloha Mora, pops up. And then as soon as my keystrokes move, I can rotate this camera twice. And notice I have it set as camera B, right? Reality states it is an Insta360 link, right? But I have it set in camera B. So that way when I do things, I get camera A, camera B, all right? So that's cool there. So I got my regular camera, I got this. Now let's go make another new scene. I had this particular one, I'm gonna call this my browser scene. I'll go ahead and pop that. And then let me go ahead and make the next one. In this particular case, I'm gonna stick in this camera. I'm gonna pencil it, go down to Squircle right there. You see I'm selecting Squircle, right? I'm gonna unambiguous it a little bit about around here. Find the top, find the center. Check this out. Let me, uh, Make sure you can see what I'm doing. Why, why did you do that? I told you to stay upside down. <laughs> oh, apply to all scenes. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Now we got this problem. My overhead is a little crooked. Either that or I've been moving stuff on my desk while I'm getting set up. Anyway, watch this. I'm going to click this. Hold the option key. This big fat finger. Hold the option key. You can see over here in the corner it says option. Just go like that. You can move one over. Okay. I can 86 this, no need. I like to clean my overlay so they don't get messy. So anyway, that's how you make a duplicate of the camera. You can also undo that. Let me uh, delete both of these. Just wanna remind you of other ways to do this. You can select this camera, compress, Command C, copy, Command V, paste. And now there's another one, right? And every time I hit paste, there's another one. Okay. You can also, believe it or not, go to a whole different joint and press paste. Okay. So when you're building your scenes, don't make your, don't make your job hard. Just copy it. Once you have them in position and you know they're in position, copy paste, fam. Copy paste. It'll make your life a heck of a lot easier. All right. <laughs> you could try. You could cut it up first. <laughs> uh, what site do I use for nice non-moving backgrounds? C-A-N-V-A. <laughs> uh, Gradient. Oh, my God. Why well, I forgot what it's called. Uh, Gradient Hunt. Gradient Hunt. Uh, just search. Go to the G-O-O-G-L-E. Find me Gradient Builder site. There you go. I just like nice gradients, and I cannot lie. All right, so go here now. I'm going to press this, and I want to change this to be the overhead. So now I can leave that there. If I have my guest camera, guest one, I could put that over there, right? You know what I'm saying? So you can totally build that up, build that up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that is how... That is how, boom, right? So just drag it. So look, if I, have, if I have another guest, right, I'm gonna have multiple guests on this here show, I can have my guest two camera is right there. If I say I know I'm gonna have three guests, I hit the camera placeholder down here in the bottom, and then I say add a placeholder camera. It's gonna give me another camera, and I'm gonna have this set for guest three. Then I can just poof them in there like that. Now I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of some learning real quick. I'm gonna, this is gonna hurt my feelings to break my scene, but let me move this out the way. You can see I can have as many placeholder cameras as necessary, including, including my iPhone. Look, I can pop my iPhone in there. Now you can't tell because it's in the wrong shape, but if I, I always press the wrong one. If I change this to towel, then you can see, look, my iPhone is right there. I'm in do not disturb. And yet, somehow, when Paul texts me, it'll come through. <laughs> right? 
So, yeah, you can just throw your iPhone right there like that there. You know what I'm saying? So everyone's like, well, how do you connect your iPhone? Look, right here, cable. Look, including a busted, like, almost round by fell apart because of my niece, Emma. I traded cables with her. I bought her a braided one, and she gave me the crusty one. Even the crusty one, it still works. Okay? So I just want y'all to know that. That's the thing. That's the thing. How you do that there? Uh, let's put that back. All right. Now, I'm going to give you guys a little tip. Um, oh, yeah. You can... In big and these, if you can't see or you got a whole separate monitor, which you might put them on, you can adjust the size. And I don't know why I just did that because I'm going to be angry as I try to get it back to how I had it. I'm very, very particular about how my stuff be. See, now it's too wide. Dang funny. Let me, I'm going to tweak on this and I need to be teaching y'all. <laughs> I'm supposed to be teaching y'all. But like, I, I, I don't like my stuff looking faulty in these streets. There you go. That's about what I need right there. Uh, how you do that there? All right, cool. So let me show you guys a little trick. Um, it's just something that I tend to do. When you know you're going to have a guess and there is a high probability that we all know there's a high probability that the guess might just like randomly disappear in the middle of your stream. And you don't want that to happen. Okay, so what you do. You grab yourself a photograph, photograph of your guests like this, boom, unambiguous it, make it match your camera frame. If you have the wrong shape, no biggie, use the option key. Let me show you this real quick. If for some reason you don't have the right shape, hold the option key, tuck. If you're good at tucking, never mind, it's a whole different show. Uh, put it like that. Drop it underneath your guest camera. And so that way, if the internet eats it, you got a picture of your guest there, not a gaping hole, right? If your guest has pieces out, right, put the picture back there, Luis, for the flow. <laughs> put your picture back there just in case the guest pieces out, your scene doesn't all of a sudden look odd. You know what I mean? But then if your guest is legit there, Right, like they're in the building, it's just gonna be like that. No biggie, no harm, no foul. Right, but if all of a sudden the guest piece is out, like internet go, uh, look, it's fine. Nobody's mad. It looks glorious. You know what I'm saying? So that's all you need to do. Now let's take it one step further, real quick. Uh, let me go back and throw in guest one. You could tell that I actually have that internal frame kind of in big and too big. So let me put it back on top because I want to keep the border if they piece out. So you can adjust it just to the edge of the border where you can hardly see the border is there. Um, the snapping might start to give you a little craziness, but just tippy toe a little bit on the marble floor. And then just kind of adjust it so it's kind of sort of perfect and then drop it back underneath. So even when they disappear, the border doesn't even disappear. You know what I'm saying? Just saying. Just make it easier. Make it easy on yourself, right? Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Paul, did you got? It's called Keystroke Pro App Store. Yo, Eron, Eron, qué pasa, brother? What's up? Long time no see. Man, listen, listen. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell let me show you something. Your man's is cable rich. I got lots of cables. I immediately get rid of ugly cables and vibrated cables. I just was trying to make sure that it still worked because my niece was trying to say it didn't work, but she just wanted to steal my cable. <laughs> What's up, Ant? Good to see you here, bro. Appreciate you. Um, there you go. Boom, boom, boom. That was for you, Obs. That was strictly for you, uh, cycle type folks. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Keystroke Pro is in the App Store. It is a lovely, like, tutorial oriented tool. Man, the crooked camera is going to drive me batty. And I know I shouldn't focus on this, but hey, there you go. It's a little better. It's going to drive me nuts. All right. So now you guys got this. Let's build us some, let's build us some text. All right. So we're going to pop over here real quick. I'm going to let y'all see. Look, T is for text. All right, so you'll see, I got my little thing here. Let me move this over. Ooh, wrong window. Don't move my windows. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, go like that. All right, so now we're going to select ourselves a font. I'll pick, 
I use Open Sans Avenue. I'll use Avenue next. And then um, let's do a little thing here. Hit the all button. Learn how to spell. Boom. Okay. As you can tell, that's just like way too obnoxious, right? So you can doink, go like that. But wait till you see what I do with this after this. I like to, this is just a tip. I like to pick, let me see who's, let's use this. I like to pick a long name first because it make it easier to build the short ones, right? So if I was going to build my title here, I might go something like this, right? And then why are you typing in all caps today? I must have hit that button, but I got fat fingers always hit that. Oh, I know I was holding the button down. Jeez, wow. <laughs> Okay, look, it knows you did it wrong. All right, so I like to build off the long one first, right? And then kind of, I like to give it some space. I don't like to have them like this. And get, you do what you want, right? I'm just telling you from a person who knows how to design things. <laughs> All right, so I'll come in and take that one and give it a little bit of extra bite. I'll take that one and give it a little less bite, right? And then I like to bring it down fonts like to work in eights don't it's a it's a hard explanation i ain't gonna get into that but fonts like to work in eights right so if if these are you know font sizes are at 36 if you do your font sizes in numbers of eights or fours well eights and fours are the same thing really uh they'll just work better it's the thing okay so like there you go this is the way i would build it hold the option key again Put it over here and then come back to my OG one and adjust it. Bam. Now you know how to do your, do that there, right? You should always start with the longest one first, just in case somebody's last name is like, uh, like Anthony's name is be kind of alphabetic, right? You got a lot of letters up in that piece, right? So as you're dealing with stuff, you know, you might want to do that. All right. So boom. Glenda, I specifically put these bad boys on the screen because of you. So just know that that was specifically for you. And then I knew other people would get a kick out of it. But yeah, when I saw the app, I went Glenda, command G. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so now we got that. That's how you do your, your thing like that. There's some other cool stuff that you can do with the text. Let me go over here. Let's do something. Let me show you something. Uh, let's see. Let's dance. Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. To the song they're playing on the radio. Oh, my goodness. Man, Glenn blocked all the text, so you can't copy nothing from the site. <laughs> all right, so let me copy that real quick. I'm going to come here and press on the text box again. This time I'm going to come down and pick Strolling Tiki, right? If you paste it in, just paste it, it's going to come out looking kind of goofball, right? So what you can do – oh, it's not working. Cancel that. I'm going to make it another one. What you can do is if you hold command option shift V, it pastes it and keeps the formatting, right? Now I want to select all of that. Like I said, work in eights and then 
I'm going to change this to scroll and ticky. And then I think Avenue Next regular. If you have a lot of text and you need to scroll it, you should use a font that has serifs like times. There's not too much text, so I'm going to leave it. But just for your edu education, if you're going to have a lot of text for people to read, take it off of a sans serif font and use a serif font. And the difference is those little feet on the bottom. If your font got feet on the bottom, like the newspaper, that is a serif font. All right, so now I can throw my scrolling ticker in there and I can just drop it down. And then I might want to like piece out the border. It's, I mean, the corners, that's a little bit harsh. Boom. So then smooth, just like the silk. Now I understand that some of y'all are not in the Evelyn Speed Wood reading course. Just go towards the turtle. Slow that bad boy down. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Simple as pie. Now, every time we do this, somebody says, well, what if I wanted to look like that? but I kind of want half of it to disappear. Open up your PNG and draw yourself a little area like this and then hit Command K. Save it. Oh, you dummy. I just oversaved the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, that's all right. I got, I got more. <laughs> that was super dumb. Uh, when you save it, save it to a different name. Don't do what I just did. I'm only showing you one side because I accidentally saved it to that name and not what I wanted to do. But anyway, so if you click on this little paper here, you can grab the paper, drag it here, turn it loose, and then you put it in the area where it goes. You see what I'm saying? And then now you don't have to take over your whole screen. And because you selected an area that's kind of, the, if you're using the gradient, you know, if you use a solid color, you don't have to do this. But if you're selecting the gradient, it's about the right color. You know what I'm saying? And then so it doesn't look so off. So if you wanted to chop off, that's how you do it. You just cover it with another piece. So simple. All right. Anyway, just want to cover that because people always ask, like, it's not that hard. Not that hard. Cover it up. Cover it up. How do you display comments on screen in Ecamm? Cool. You click on the person's face. <laughs> Patrick, that's my favorite thing. Every time somebody who doesn't use Ecamm sees an Ecamm thing, they're like, yo, how do you do that? We click on it. That's it. That's it. We take care of the rest for you. If you're using one of the common streaming localities, right? And what I mean by that, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, um, they, they all, the comment APIs work. Instagram comment API doesn't exist like it doesn't exist at all. So you're not going to get that. But in the, in the normal spots, you legit just click on the face, bam, in there like swimwear, nothing else to do. And here's a fun fact. If you drag another one up there, you can have more than one. You don't, you know what I'm saying? Can you interview people with the standard version? I uh, no. That's a pro feature. Just get it. Just get it. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something mean, and I don't mean this anyway mean, but it's going to sound mean, so I'm just going to protect myself before I say it. You can't come in with the username, lock in profit, and then not get the pro version. I mean, that's just not working. Those maps don't math. All right, I'm sorry. I'll take it back. Uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> like, just get the pro feature. Everybody in here got pro just about is because it's the way to roll. It just is. There are some things you can do. You can use Skype. If you want to do interview without the pro feature, just use Skype. Skype works. But I would change my username because not going to work. Not working for your brand. I'm just saying. Andy, say it again for the people in the back. I'm glad you have a sense of humor. <laughs> some people will get offended. All right, anyway, uh, is there a way to automate camera angle switching due to live stream? Why, of course there is. Architectural Sheet Metal 101. <laughs> I'm going to call you ASM or you tell us your real name because I do not want to have to say that more than twice. <laughs> okay, watch this. This is super cool. Hey, stop doing that. All right, there you go. This is super cool. I'm going to show you guys this. You guys are going to love this. Let's, uh, let's pop over here. I almost felt like ShamWow. You know the show why you guys gonna like my never mind. <laughs> or uh, slap chop, that's what it is. Let me uh, pull this back just a smidgen. Down here in the bottom ASM, you'll see we're gonna create us a new scene, but 
we have the ability to duplicate the scene, put some scenes in the folders, and then this last piece down here, if I, oh, you can't see that. Let me uh, back out just a little taste. It says new automatic group. Boom, let's select that. Let's take this new scene right here and drop it into the new automatic group, right? Okay, so we're gonna name these scenes. Stop holding the, there you go. And I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna duplicate it one more again. And for the sake of argumentation, for the sake of argumentation, I'm gonna come and click on the gearbox here and set this bad boy for 10 seconds. You can do a fixed interval, you can do random timings, it's up to you. From a transition, I'm gonna use a cross dissolve, okay? And then I just wanted to advance to the next scene. Okay, so let's come back out here to our first scene. And then unambiguous. Let's first throw up camera A. Pip, 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 hooray, right? So we're gonna copy camera A, go to scene two, paste camera A. This one, I'm gonna change the camera E. Now, what's camera E? That looks just like camera A, doc. Man, don't mess with me. I'm in charge over here, hold up. I'm gonna press zoom and pan. I'm gonna go a little bit melon sauce, right? And then I'm gonna hit this again, and I'm gonna go, frankly, Scarlet ma'am, I don't give it, you know what I'm saying? All right, cool. So now we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna paste in camera A again, but this time I'm gonna change this one over to uh, this camera, I'm gonna select 4K, and then this is camera I, pop it there, and this time I'm gonna hit the zoom and pan, and I'm gonna just move the melon to a different side, okay? There, so now we got side melon action. Okay, so when we go through our scenes, we got normal melon, we got scarlet ma'am, and we got side melon, right? And then, listen, you ready, ASM? This is it. Play. That's it. And you just sit back, relax, and wonder what you did with that bottle of water while we go through this. Trust me, people, this is not vodka. Look, Ma, no hands. So yes, we are Ecamm, and we can do all myriad sorts of things. So there you go. That is how you do that, ASM. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Somebody let Jay Nice in the building. Can you tell me the items that are in the folder? Can you tell what? You can tell items are in the folder when you see their inset. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Paul. He said that like a true senior. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. There you go. So there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I did. I didn't mean. I didn't mean that. <laughs> uh, is there anywhere of ecam around your border or move border or movie? Apparently not when it's an animated overlay. There are no ways, but there's ways. There's always a way. Okay. So, Julia, you've been here like 100,000 times and you didn't know that? Okay, you fired. I thought we was friends. A lot. Look, all the Hawaii people showing up. Yay, all Hawaii people, all three of us represent. <laughs> I think there's four of us total, maybe five of us total in the ECAM community. <laughs> All right, cool. Let me show you how to do the little cheat code. Dan, Dan, this is, um, yeah, let me show you the cheat code. Uh, let's say I'm going to go and build a new scene plus, and then I'm going to stick on a camera. In this case, I'll just use a guest camera because I really don't need that thing to be there. And then... I'm going to have to take off the corner, but I'm gonna embiggen the border like obnoxiously. I know you're already following me, Dan. I know you didn't already figure this out because I mean, it, it makes about like 
two seconds of of thanking. Now, in theory, I copied back over my Ecamm assets folder, so we are going to be good to go. And in theory, I'm going to see my WebM. And in theory, notice this file type is a WebM. I don't want to hear anyone say, hey, when I drag in my videos, they don't have any sound on top. That's because they're not WebMs. If they're WebMs, they do. And there it goes. Hey everyone, it's Shelly from Shelly Saves the Day. I want to send some special love out to my Ecamm fam. You guys know how much I love you all. I love your product and I love being an affiliate with you as well. I have to say, being an affiliate with Ecamm, not only- Listen, now my subsequent movie film, oi, my subsequent movie film has a border. It ain't perfect, but it's a border. And if I, if I want to be really, really anal about it, I can hold the option key and like, you know, size it perfectly. But there you go. Now you want to make sure you don't break this. And since we're on the subject, Dan, let's come down here. Let's hit a folder. Let's call this a new group. All right. Then we're going to link this and we're going to pop this movie in here. And we're going to pop this in here. Okay. And then that's it. So now if we unambiguous this uh, brain cells, there you go. There you go. Then we got us a movie film and all of that's there. This is not going to show up in your stream because it's actually in the back, but that's how you can do it. Simple. If you, if you don't even want to go that far, you could take it a whole nother step further uh, let me do this real quick just to show you what I mean. You could even take it another step further to make your job easier. Check this out. Boos, yaka, yaka, yaka. Let's take this design. Let's delete the funny looking dude. Uh, let's come over here, go to background, backgrounds. And then let's pick something kind of weird. I'll just use grass for today. Um, and then... What I want to do is grab an element. I want something with rounded shapes. Actually, let me delete this. All right, just take this rounded shape and then embiggen it to almost the size of a 1920 by 1080, right? Then we're going to duplicate that, put the next one on top, change the inside to black. You, you, get, you see what I'm getting at here? So then, I mean, I would normally sit here and tweak out and make it like perfect, but I ain't got that kind of time today. So anyway, you just take it like this, take whatever color you want this outside to be. And I got my brands in here. So I'll just pick this cause it's kind of close and then just save this as a PNG. I use 1280 by 720 close enough. It's downloading real quick and boom. So now I got that. Oh, I know what the inside should have been an actual solid rectangle because videos don't really have borders, but I'm gonna open this up, click on that bad boy right there, hit the magical wand, delete it. I don't know why the background didn't all the way save transparent PNG, but I can fix that later. We're going to ignore that for this. Literally, I would just come over here and do the same thing and kill the, you know, the background edges. It's not, it's not the prettiest cause I did it wrong, but I was cause I'm speeding. Anyway, save this. If you click on it, pick it up, drop it in there. Now you got a movie frame border for all subsequent movie films, right? So I can X this and then come back to my movie scene. Hey everyone, it's Shelly from Shelly Saves the Day. I want to send some special love Shelly, out to my Ecamm fam. Today. You guys know how much I love you all. I okay, sorry Shelly, don't be mad at me. Delete that camera and then just paste this in. So now you got a border, right? Unlink this for a second. 
move the movie however you need to move it and fit in the border. So it's adjusted. That's about right. Put the border on top. Again, I didn't clean the border as good as I should have cleaned it. But like, if there's no borders, make borders. It's so simple. It, it literally is a five second fix. If I spent, you know, like two more seconds on it, it would have been obnoxious. But it's that simple. Now you got to do is just, you know, change the movie. If we were in Final Cut and I needed a border for the movie, I would probably just make a border. So, yeah, super simple. Easy. Easy! Cool. Right, so thank you, Paul. There's the answer to that. I won't get into that too much, but now you guys already seen that can be done. <laughs> Boom. Yo, MTD in the building. I'll see you next week. See you next week. I'm super excited. Uh, how do we send people in Zoom in order to upgrade their quality? Uh, yeah. Paul, can you get that? It's in there's a, it's, if you search it in the group, it's been posted into the ecamm group and Facebook ad nauseum. It's in there, but it's in there. Um, nice, congrats, congrats. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Uh, you can use your iMac as a monitor with a uh, Luna display, but. There's so many dope displays on the market. I'm using two LGs right now. They're pretty as pie. Pretty as punch. The, the Apple Studio monitor is the closest thing to an iMac. All right, so let's get in some more action. You guys saw me pull in the movie real quick. That's this animated overlay right here. But you can also bring in, you know, like graphic-oriented files. If you need to drop in a graphic of some sort, you just drag it in. And then, you know, size it accordingly. Throw it up here in the corner like such, right? So you can get busy with that. You can have drag in graphics. You've already seen the fact that I've able to drag in a video that's just as a video. It's just going to want to play as a full screen movie with audio. Sorry, Shelly. <laughs> Sorry. I'm talking to Shelly like she's here. Comlings fresh out the box looks just like this picture. Whenever we play movies, it automatically, um, it automatically mutes the microphone on purpose. You can set it so it doesn't do that. So anyway, if you drag in the movie, it's going to switch to the movie mode. I don't want to do that, right? I just don't. So what I like to do is come from the camera position. Again, I'm always starting with a blank scene. And then I put my camera on like this. And then if I want to drag in a movie, I drag in a movie that has been converted to a WebM, so that way it will make the noise. You know what I'm saying? So for instance, if I were to drag this in. So if you convert your stuff to WebMs, you can keep the audio and the movie together. That's, that's it. That's what you need to do. And then that works with animated GIFs. Uh, that works with all myriad... Uh, all myriad types of files. Animated GIFs just work. Uh, your movies will work with no sound, of course. So there's just some of the things that you can do to add a little sauce to your show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, listen, let's cover this real quick. Animations and sounds and stingers and all of that stuff, think of them as scotch bonnets. A little bit go a long way, you know. You not need throwing all the scotch bonnet with the thing so hard no one can eat the food. Listen to me closely. A little bit goes a long way. Don't go crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, everything, Chris. Most people be trying to do all of this twirling and stuff, and now I can't even pay attention to your show. Most people can't. I, I can pay attention to anything. I'm a very good attention span. But, yeah, I just, yeah. People, it, it goes, you get too fancy. You get too cute. You don't have to be that cute. TV ain't that cute. Watch TV. They don't do that much craziness. They keep it mellow, right? People get, I, ooh, look, this, and they go crazy. Don't, don't, don't go crazy. Keep it simple. K-I-S-S. -S. Okay. Let's get on to... This clock situation, you can come down here and you got a countdown timer, right? This is a countdown timer. 
and it can be set to do myriad things, right? So you double click this. We got go to the next scene when finished. That's one of those. You got auto start if you want. You can, you can check that on and off. We have countdown to the same time every day. Like if I'm doing an ECAM thing in Boston, I'm going to set this bad boy to 1230 because I know for a fact that that's when the is going to blow. Uh, there's a factory horn. So we can have the screen do something automatically every time the factory horn decides to do its thing, right? Um, so yeah, you can do that. You can do countdown to a date and time. So we can do Todd's favorite. Man, listen, there you go. And so we got uh, 289 days until Christmas, right? And then you can do just a standard issue clock, or you can do a swatch watch, a stopwatch. <laughs> what the heck, Doc? A swatch watch. It's 7 o'clock on the dot. I'm in my drop top cruising the streets. Right? So you can just do something like that. Boom. I know some of y'all in the afternoon, but over here, it's still early. All right. Um, yes, good answer, Rich. There's a massive advantage to using WebM and cam overlays versus a MP4 and a video share. WebMs are smaller. <laughs> if you convert your stuff with WebMs, they're smaller. Anybody who has ever acquired a 4K video from YouTube, YouTube stores it in WebM format. They invented the format for their own personal storage because of things like 50 billion short views a, an hour. Isn't that crazy? Or a day, sorry. 50 billion short views a, views a day. By making the file smaller, they save money on server space. So they completely invented the WebM format and pushed its prop uh, propagation throughout all the rest of the creator apps because it's so much smaller. So I have taken videos that I've created that would come out to like, you know, two gigs and then throw it in the WebM format and get it down to like 200 megs, undiscernible from the human eye, especially eyes that are our age. <laughs> So, yes, that's a good question, Rich. So, yeah, I convert. I try to convert all my stuff. I tell people, if you're gonna if you're gonna do YouTube shows, which I'll show you guys right now, if you're gonna do YouTube shows in your or YouTube clips or play other random videos in your thing, there's a couple ways to do that. One is just open a window like this and do like this. Uh, how you do that there? This way to me is uh, dangerous. You do what you want. Ain't nobody going to tell you what to do, but I think that's a little dangerous simply for the reason that you only have but so much bandwidth of pixels. So if you're using it to stream, you also don't want to be using it to try to play some video. You probably don't have the rights to play. <laughs> sorry. I could, I had to throw that part in. That's not really true. Um, anyway, let me, uh, I'm sorry. I can't help it. I got to soften these corners up. It's just, it's life. That's life. That's what people say. All right, cool. So this is one way. Let me show you the next way. Let me off that. And then I'm going to hit web widget. Inside YouTube, I am going to copy this here thing, right? And then I'm going to paste it in. This is the link to that same video by Kat and Tom. I'm going to do 1920 by 1080 because, I don't know, I am allergic to 720. All right? And then I'm going to hit high res mode, keep it running. Boom. I'm going to do my transition flying from the right because I'm weird like that. All right. Wow. Let's unambiguous that. And I must have typed in the wrong number. What did I type in that was the wrong number? Oh, 180. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay, so now I can size this up and do this here. Um, 
it's giving me heat about that. We're going to ignore that for right now. So if I were to press this bottom control and turn it into a fingy, now I have access to actually run this here page. Y'all want to do something really stupid? Watch this. Oh, I can't play the live demo. <laughs> that would have been super funny. Let's play Marshall. I know how you can go from showing up. Hit your face, Marshall. Then I come over here and I can press theater mode or I can press full screen. Boom. So this is another way. Again, I think this is better because I got control. I can play, stop. I don't have to leave my app. I don't got to move nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? If I turn this volume up right here. To your meetings, classes, and webinars like a profession. It'll play. You know what I'm saying? I could jump to the different chapters. I got action. I got action. So to me, doing the web way as a widget is better. The one thing that some folks have tripped about, and I understand, um, it doesn't let you properly sign in sometimes. Try and see if it works for you. Sometimes I've run into issues where it won't let you sign in. You just might got to try again. I, I don't. We don't know why that does that, but semi-relevant. And I'm going to give you the smartest, smartest way possible. Now you guys ready for the smartest way possible? Let me do that. Who are you going to call me? Why are you going to call? Don't call during the stream. I have do not disturb on. My phone straight up ignores do not disturb. It's driving me batty. I don't know why. Anyway, so if I were to, uh, let me just give you guys the actual page. This is what I use. I think it's better. Um, the I can't. I can't verbalize it. You're going to have to do some of your own research. You're going to have to learn how to Google because the company with the red play button doesn't like when people talk about this particular piece of software. So I won't verbalize it. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a little gray area, but download your videos and play them directly from your computer. Play them directly from your computer. Your machine is already streaming. It's already compressing the video from your Sony or your iPhone or your Canon or your Nikon or your Panasonic. Well, it's compressing your unfocused video from your Panasonic. Um, anyway, it's already doing a lot of work. So you're going to do that. You're going to send a signal to the platforms Half of y'all that's trying to do that are sending it to seven platforms and you're going to try to play a video that's playing live at the same time. I wouldn't do that. I just wouldn't do that. <laughs> like it's already a lot. It's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, right? It's trying to stop on a dime after you came from 180 miles an hour. Not that easy. You're going to stop. You're going to stop on about three blocks worth of tire skids. So, yeah, it's better if you download your videos. Also, look at this. I'm sending y'all a fairly decent stream right now, and I'm only using six megabits per second on my upload speed. If you're going to play videos, probably download them. I get sometimes it comes up live and in action. The other thing is, like maybe if you're doing it to your Zoom group or whatever, it's fine. If you're doing it to a live stream to YouTube, man, copyright strike every freaking time is not worth it. I get them complaining about my own videos from a different channel. So it's just not worth it. You probably don't even need to do that. <coughs> Sorry, I'm catching a little cold, Gretchen. <laughs> Brady is on Team Cannon with you, and he just bought a new R6 something. So, yes, Brady is right there with you, Team Cannon. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Anyway, so that's just the thing. To me, it's better if you can download it. Understand there might be situations where you cannot, but pre-production goes a long way to making your life easier. I will say this firsthand, and people get mad, but I'll just be honest. When I see the questions of what type of 
problems, quote unquote, issues that people are having in the community. Almost 80% of them could be avoided with pre-production. I'm going to just say that. I'm going to just say almost 80% of them could be avoided with pre-production. Maybe my number is a little evil. It might be like 75, but it ain't, it's not, it's over 50. More than 50% of them could be covered with actual pre-production. Do your tests, check your equipment, make sure everything is working, download videos you need to download, use PDFs instead of PowerPoints, like all of the above. Anyway, so let's cover that just in case somebody's doing menus. Uh, sorry, not menus, doing previews. Uh, what that thing is? Presentations here. Let's cover that real quick. Um, Let's do this one. So if you are doing a presentation, right? Uh, let's come here. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to do this. My way, the preferred way, the, the way that makes the most sense to me is convert it to a PDF and drag it into your thing. Scroll over here, put it right there and use it as a PDF and just use the arrow keys to change the slides. This is bullet freaking proof. Bulletproof, like 100% bulletproof. That is the best way. Okay, but people, but I got animations and stuff in my, you're live, you are the animation, you don't need it. But don't listen to me, I'm just a professional. Come over here, go to Keynote, I still not have installed PowerPoint on my machine because it's sacrilege, but I might have to do it one day just to show y'all how to do this here. Okay, so in Keynote, if you open this bad boy up right here in the very top window in Keynote, there is two options, play in full screen, play in a window. If you do play in a window, right? Scroll to the top, play. You get one window with your notes and all of that kind of things, right? It's all up in here, right? Your notes, the next slide, the whole nine yards. Pick this up and piece it out to a different monitor, right? If you don't have a different monitor, you can't really do this. I'm sorry. You kind of need two monitors, right? If that one monitor could be an iPad, let's be honest, right? So let's slide that over here. Now, this is your Prezo and it's playing in a window. Now you're not gonna be in live demo mode, so what you're gonna to wanna to do, click over here on the eCam. This, this is all you one monitor people. I don't know how you live, but knock yourself out. Go like this, click here, come down here to the bottom, press screen share overlord, overlay. <laughs> press on the pencil, change this to keynote, and then you want the actual slide title. There it is. So now it's up in here. Everything works. And then you can use the arrow keys to change, but you got to come back here for a second, click on that. Cause you got to have the focus in the front and then you can change slides. Now your audience isn't going to see anything but this, right? This is what y'all finna see. So as I'm here, even though on my monitor, I have this in front, your audience don't see that, right? Let me go back to demo mode real quick. Even if I wanted to put the presenter display right here, this don't even have to be that big, right? You can uh, you can unembiggen this. We will take care of the rest. As you can see, the text gets a little goofy when I go too small. See how funny looking that is? So you can embiggen it to about the size that you need. Move it out. Hey, hey, go back, Ed. You can move it out the way. You can have your presentation notes right here. If I hide live demo mode, right? Y'all are seeing the show. I can click on my thing. I can do my presentation. And as far as y'all concerned, you don't see nothing. And you're like, oh, that's cool. But this is kind of ugly. Cool. Grab the option key. Tuck. Tuck it in. Like RuPaul. Just tuck it. Boom. There you go. Now your gravy, and you can do your whole prezo 
all of that. If you got animations and all that mess, it should work. If it's jerky, your machine just don't got that kind of bass. That's about what it is. You know what I'm saying? So that's the other way to do it. But honestly, nine times out of ten, just do it as a PDF family. It will make your job so much easier. Uh, that depends on your platform. Let's put it this way. You can get... On certain platforms, you can ingest an RTMP feed, so therefore, yes. Uh, YouTube, you just embed the player. Vimeo, you just embed the player, like so forth, so on, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Can you download clips and insert into a play course? Uh, theoretically, no, but yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to say the safe answer is no. Now, on a whole different question, Aubrey, uh, unless somebody sees it that can get you in trouble, <laughs> you're kind of okay. But, yeah. How would I say this? It's a common practice. But in that same potion, Patrick, if I took your paid course and I took videos out of your paid course, and I played them in my course. How you feeling? Especially if I charge more for your for my course. If you had a thousand dollar course, and I took your videos and stuck them in my ten thousand dollar course, how you feel? We have a song in Hawaii. How you feeling? <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, so people want to do it, but it. Yeah, you're probably not going to get in trouble, but. Just saying, do on to others. Rule number one. Uh, you just tried the widget, the sound won't play. That's a Marie thing. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. What are you trying to play, Marie? What exactly are you trying to play? Is it a video from YouTube? Because if you are playing a video from YouTube, uh, that is just how you may not have sound effects. Uh, so let me fix that. You might not have this here set up you might not have uh screen sharing and why is my brain missing oh there you go broadcast system audio mine is set to never why is mine set to never because i have a roadcaster pro i route all my audio with the roadcaster pro if you're having that problem you might have to come in here and set when using the screen share or all the time in order to get the sound to peek through I said mine to never because I use the Rodecaster Pro. Because, you know, everyone says, you don't need to spend this kind of money on the Rodecaster Pro. You don't, but I tell you what, it makes life easy. It do. You don't have to, but it makes life easy. Chee hoo. I eat then. I eat then. Uh, what else? Oh, let me see. Oh, I think we're about to get in trouble. <laughs> I think we're supposed to be doing. Uh, Another stream in a second. Let me double check to see if Katie scheduled it or not. Because uh, Paul didn't yell at me yet, so it might not be scheduled. <laughs> and in which case, we can keep going. It worked! Yay, Marie! It worked! Uh, is it scheduled, Paul? I don't see it on this thing over here. Friday, March 10th. Yes, it's coming. I see it. All right. So we do have to go over and do affiliate training. So that concludes today. Let me just check on questions to see if we missed anything. I think I got most of them. That was not what I was supposed to do. <laughs> I was supposed to hit the queue over here. This is why we asked you to queue colon because you'll notice in the comments and reactions box, there is a search. So I throw the queue colon in here and then I double check to see if I'm missing any questions. Oh, um, what I say, Paul? Shutter encoder. <laughs> it got stuck behind the old somewhere. <laughs> yes, shutter encoder at shutterencoder.com. 
There you go. We did cover all the questions. That's that's glorious. You guys did fantastic today. All right, so we're going to jump over to affiliate training. Uh, Marie, I will see you in Meat Space next week in actual life. So good to see Ading, and it'll be fun. Anybody who's in the Diego area, I'll be there for like four days hanging out at social media marketing world. So, yeah, if, if you're in the Diego area, pop in. Say what's up. We'll be out there. Um, I'm going to do affiliate training now, and then next week we got demo again. We do this every uh, freaking time, <laughs> so all good in the hood. And then uh, probably after the affiliate training, I'm going to do an improv to live on my channel slash Amazon Live because I got to show some cool stuff to people that's traveling. All right, there you go. Peace out, A-Town Stump. You guys are freaking amazing. Happy birthday, Tots, and fantastic stream on Tuesday with Katie. That was just great. I do want to tell you guys something. I don't know if Paul has the link real quick. Um, There is a community member who had a fire just take out his entire house. So um, Katie being Katie <laughs> and the ECAM fam, we decided to set up a GoFundMe for Hank Russell. His house burned down. There'll be links in the community. And Paul just kicked you off the link. If anything can help family, because, you know, it's a, that's a horrible thing. As, you know what? I'm not afraid of a lot of things in this world. I'm a pretty fearless individual. I mean, to the point where it's actually bad for my health, kind of fearless. <laughs> but one thing I always have worried about, because I, I had a friend of mine in high school that had their house burned down. I could not just imagine losing all my stuff in a fire. Like, that's just got to be crazy. Like, I look at my Pelican case over here. And it's nothing special, but it has a little sticker of Rich's face on it. If that was to burn, I would be really sad. I can call Rich and ask him if he has any more. But, like, the fact that Rich went out of his way to send me a sticker of his face and I put it on all my luggage because I can find it right away. Like, I would be literally sad. Rich is like family to me at this point. So that would, like, just really irritate me, you know. Or losing my hard drives with all of the footage from the POVs and the social media marketing worlds and the events that we've all done together where we got a chance to meet in real life, you know, that would just be kind of sad. So yeah. Um, if you can do anything to help out for Hank, please send him, send him a little love. You know, don't got to be a lot. Every little bit counts, especially when we have a community that's like 25,000 deep, every little bit helps. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, I love you guys. I'll see you in two seconds. And the affiliate as fast as this profile thing switches. Sorry, no theme song because we're in a rush. Peace out. A-Town Stump.